Hello Internet, we're going to try something a little bit different today. Uh, I was browsing our programming on Reddit and I found somebody linking to this question on Stack Overflow. And the question is, can A equal 1 and A equal 2 and A equal 3 ever ev evaluate to true? And the interesting thing is, yes. And so we're going to be demonstrating how you can do that in C Sharp. We're going to talk a little bit about why you might want that to be possible. I, it's kind of an edge case, but we'll talk about that. And we'll talk about probably why this came up. And then also a little bit just generally about running into these kinds of things. So this is just, I don't know, it's kind of a messy question. I it, They say it was asked in an interview. I wouldn't, I, granted, I don't interview people, but I wouldn't ask this question in an interview. This is the kind of thing where you just, it's a, it's a brain teaser. It's the kind of thing where like, well, no, huh, but yes. And so you can make this work. You just shouldn't. And really the, the problem is you'll run into somebody that thought this was a good idea and implemented it this way. And then you have to go and kind of work around what they did because it's just too much work to change it back. And so if I go here, we have just this basic unit test that I put together. It's passing right now. And we have the messed up class, which just has a size that we initialize, and then it just outputs a size. So our current test just creates the class and then says, is it equal to the value that we set? What I want to do is actually modify it to be like that example. So say n the messy class dot size is equal to two and the class's size is equal to three. Now if I do uh, control R control, oops, that's the control panel, that was wrong. Control R control T should rerun tests or I can just hit run all and this will rerun and fail. <laughs> um, hopefully it fails. If it passes, then I've already screwed this up. Uh, but obviously one is not equal to two. So this isn't going to work. And the problem here is we're assuming that this size, this git, is going to always return the same thing. The problem is that doesn't always happen. And in some cases, that's by design. Uh, if you're familiar with Unity 3D, they have a class called random, and that just has a value. The thing is, the random value in Unity isn't equal to the random value if you get it again. Because every time you call this, it regenerates a new one, which kind of makes sense. You have a random va a singleton that's a random value generator, and you can just call it with, I want a new value, what is it? And every time you do that, it just gets you a new one. The problem with that is if you're assuming that this is immutable, like we're assuming this size is immutable or isn't going to change on us just randomly, it doesn't really have to be immutable, just we expect the git to not have the side effect of incrementing itself, which we can just do. So if I just add plus plus to the size, everything should come and work again. Which doesn't, I mean, it makes sense, but you would never think that this would happen. Uh, the thing is, is sometimes this happens just as sort of a side effect. You, you start implementing something, maybe not this simple. This would be easy to clean up. But if you're working with something and it just sort of kind of happens, then, <laughs> then you just start getting the value. Uh, I, I don't know if there's a good example of that. Uh, it's the top of my head, but uh, effectively think of it like if you need a random value, that's sort of the example we were already using. It makes some sense there. If you need an ID, say you need, uh, I guess you wouldn't really do this, but if you need a database ID, every time you get that ID, so every time I do like public int, it's not going to like this because it's right there, um, but if I do public int uh, ID and try to get the ID. I'm going to want, say, a new GUID that is just some new GUID. Uh, I pronounce that in both ways because I still don't know which people prefer. But uh, anyway, you can do things like this, which is going to confuse every, well, not necessarily everybody, but you're getting, you're getting something that isn't always the same. 
And I don't know, I kind of wanted to use this video to kind of talk about unexpected side effects and why you should be careful of them. I'm not sure if I'm doing a good job, uh, but basically keep this in mind, I guess. Um, when you're writing code, you don't want something that gets a value to change that value unless it's very obvious that that is going to happen and you document that sufficiently because nobody's going to expect your getters to change it. Uh, and so that's sort of, I think that's sort of what the interview is kind of trying to get at. I honestly, I don't know. Like I said, it, it doesn't make sense as an interview question. It feels too ph philosophical. It doesn't so much test your programming knowledge. It tests your not even critical thinking. I mean, you, you could probably reason through it, but it's more, why would you encounter this? Maybe to test your knowledge of the language, but it's not that hard. You just increment, if you have getters and setters, this works. Uh, so I don't know, this is sort of just what I wanted to cover and kind of talk a little bit about the dangers of side effects. You can, you can make this happen and some people will. Some people will be like, all right, somebody told me that I need this to, this case to happen. How do I do that? The easiest way, just increment it. It's two characters. You're done. You've just completed that work. But at the same time, you could create a method, for example, that is uh, get and add, for example. And so you want to just have some sort of uh, added value. And we'll just default that to one. So you, if you don't give it a value, it just automatically increments by one. And if you just call it, it just returns that the original value and then increments it. And so really the way to implement this, just int the size, uh, we'll call this, I like to use ret uh, when I'm just having a random return value. I'm not sure. It, for, for basic things, it kind of makes sense, but it's also kind of like that temp variable that you have where it just is a poor name. And so if you get this, we set it to the size and then we take size plus equals our added value. We can't use plus plus because I added it. So you could actually increment this by say five and it just works. Uh, and then we want to return our return value. So we get it, we get the original value. We increment the, the we set the new value and then we return the old value. Basic stuff. And so you can actually just replace this with, with a get and add call. We don't even need any arguments. We're done. And it's just sort of, I don't know, it's easier to understand. You kind of, know, oh, that's not right. But you kind of know what's going on here where you previously didn't. And this actually, uh, I'm going to totally screw this up. Uh, but there is atomic integer or not uh there's some sort of th anyway getting distracted i think i just used the java type but um there's atomic classes that do exactly this and they do it in a thread safe way so for example get an add only creates a single lock in order to increment or to get and increment that value which can be useful so there, there's reasons to add these sort of side effects. You can just not kind of think about what you're doing and how it's going to be used more than just what's the easiest way to do this? Because it's, it's really tempting to just kind of throw code at something and be like, ta-da, I've done it. Uh, and sure you solved the problem, but have you solved it in a way that you're going to know what's going to going on in a week or you know, six months or 10 years. Uh, so that, I don't know. That's sort of what I wanted to cover here. It, I felt like this problem was kind of bringing that up. And so I kind of just wanted to branch off on that. So yeah, that's it for this video. Uh, I haven't really done anything like this, which it feels more theory. And I don't know what you guys think about it. So let me know in the comments if this is something that you enjoyed and you want to see more of, or if you think there's something I can do to make this kind of style better. Uh, but anyway, I'll leave it here and I'll let you guys figure that stuff out. So until next time, see internet.